Okay. Hi, welcome to my podcast. Uh, no, I hadn't really figured out what my name of my podcast is, but this is episode one anyway. Um, it is um, October. No, get it, get it right. Uh, it's November the twentieth, two thousand and eighteen. Uh, I am Loretta Nash, and I'm going to be your host today. Um, I'm looking here at all this stuff, uh, what I need to do. I uh, right now have no sponsors whatsoever. This is just a uh, off the fly. Um, no sponsors. Uh, disclaimer, most of all that you hear is from my personal uh, experience. Don't necessarily mean that it's going to be the same for you. Um, so again, this is episode one. Um, I really don't have a title. I guess this will be the intro of everything. Um, I already got my timer going for 30 minutes um, to try to figure out things. Uh, introduction uh, besides I'm Loretta Nash. Uh, I'm an artist. Pretty much an artist. Working artist. I try to do things freelance or try to get a job, try to get find somebody who will uh, hire me to do some artwork. But it hasn't really come the way I think it should. I went and after high school, I went right straight to college. I uh, went to, of course, to Bible college. And then I didn't declare my major in art until my last semester of my senior year I just mainly just floated around in there so I do have an art degree and as soon as I got out of college I came home pretty much what I did I came home it's 80 it's the 90s early early 90s so I come home and we lived out in the farm way out in the farm way 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 out in the farm um, I did some work out that way this summer and it takes at least 15 minutes to get from town right here to at least half of where I used to work I um, mean live we lived up there out at Proctor until 19 uh, till 1993 so from and oh, we didn't move out there until 1990 uh, 1976 I was six years old it's in October uh, I pretty much was um, most of my things was in Arizona. My kindergarten was in Arizona, so we just I just started first grade. Um, or I don't know. I could have started first grade, second grade, I don't know. My mom has stories and she I don't know, when I came out here I had to go first grade again and I know I got frustrated because you know, that's what it it uh, since this is the 70s, 1976, uh, we're in Proctor, nothing but farmland. I mean, literally nothing but fla farmland, flat farmland. Uh, nothing wrong with it. It's really, really nice. It was really, really quiet out there sometimes. Uh, sometimes it was so quiet and everything. And but it's extra quiet too, cause uh, my dad's my dad's a Vietnam veteran, and so he has night terrors um, at night. They really had didn't bother me much growing up until later on. So most of everything didn't bother me until I. Started realizing what was going on and all this, but this is later on in years. 
this is just um I had a con I have a or had a complicated life. It I don't know how to explain it. It was just too complicated. Or as my dad said, that's too complicated. It's just it was just life. It was just how I was raised. Um before 1976 um, I really don't remember anything about living out in Arizona I really don't not very much I do remember going Easter egg hunt in the desert I do remember that and I do remember the car my dad decided one day to race a rape race a road runner and it's right beside the car and we looking out and you know no seatbelt car we looking out and seeing it and we're going over dunes and going out out where there's no road out in the desert and I do remember the Easter egg hunt dad mom and dad had all four of us hunker down yes I'm one of four I'm the oldest of four kids and then everybody's birthday is one after the other. I'm a year and nine months older than my sister. And then my, bro my little brother Robert was born and then my baby brother Herschel was born. And their birthdays were always together. So it's really crazy birthdays. First it was Hershey's birthday. Then uh, two weeks later is Robert's birthday. Then three weeks later it's mom and my sister's birthday. And then my birthday way off in January and my dad's birthday in February. So and then my, my grandma she lived with us. Um, she lived with us for a while until I guess stress life I'm not really sure but my grandma stayed with us I could remember my grandma all, most all the time I think she started um, moving and wanting to become in, more independent when she thought that we were getting older and I really I don't know when she started doing that I guess it was during the time I rebelled. I guess I rebelled by fifth grade. I was being a rebel. I mean, I always ha had a really strong mind, or so I've been told. Alright, the last thing I was talking about is my grandma. I, I don't remember when she decided to move out I, I'm figuring I'm 10 5th grade that that's when uh, you know she thought we were older, older and we're getting an age that we didn't need her anymore uh, so she, of course she moved out and since she's retired was retired and an older lady she moved up the uh, what about two miles away yeah up here at this uh, trailer park out there and I do remember visiting her in one trailer that we went her bathroom of all things was in the front of the the trailer it was one of those bus like things and the the bathroom was in in the front of the trailer and and I remember going up there we we would never necessarily have to ride a car most of the time uh, we were like well we really didn't have a car sometimes we had a station wagon sometimes we had a car sometimes we had a truck I mean it really depends and uh, going now I'm going off the tangent the truck we had at least two or three trucks and I know my dad had a work truck with all his tools and everything on it we 
barely rarely got to ride in that one because there's really nothing in the back but he went ahead and bought a truck and he put built a camper put it on the back of the truck and all that well again my grandma moved back down to Mississippi and so yeah this is probably a good idea uh, so she moved back down to Mississippi and of course it's my mom's house five acres of land in the middle of the mountains it took phew, two two hours and a half to get out there and then go up and down the road and that of course put me to sleep and I'm sleeping and Herschel's worried about getting car sick and Elizabeth fussing and they're talking and and you know I'm bored silly and I just fall asleep so I didn't know how to get out there that much so we go out there Christmas and we stay out there for a couple of days at Christmas in a house with no toilet no running water the stove is a wood burning stove my grandma you know split her own wood and brought it in there and put it in on the uh, the stove and the and she had a furnace that you know she had to burn wood on it so and then it was a two bedroom house and then the well throwing the bucket in there and, and of course it's winter but you know southern weathers are kind of warm and threw the bucket in there and pulled out the cool water and uh, that's what we had she didn't have a TV then she had electricity but you know we didn't use it that much and we stayed out th there and in the camper and then we go back come back up here and then they had that car accident we go in downtown Memphis and all of a sudden there was a stop and it raised up to see what was going on because we had a big stop and when I rose up um, we're in the back of the camper and we have nothing in there no seat belts no nothing and I slid and I hit the the end of the the cab and of course we got that camper on it and I raised up and the force hit I hit my eye and of course I'm screaming cuz I'm I'm in pain dad's you know out there I don't know what he's doing all I know is I I think I blocked out for a couple of seconds but I'm screaming and my eyes hurting and you know I could feel it growing big and everything and that we left and went to the hospital I do remember going to the hospital and the guy taking and taking me back there and x-raying and too much fluid was in uh, on the x-ray there was too much fluid way too much fluid so uh, they couldn't tell if it was broken or not but you know the force that I hit it should have been totally completely shat it should have completely shattered at least half my face and so I had a swollen face for almost the whole entire year for the fifth grade after Christmas I don't think it even went down until sixth grade I think it was it was either fourth grade or fifth grade I'm not really sure because I can remember Miss Turner so it has to be fifth grade because if I can remember Miss Turner more than any than Miss Cooper then it had to be fifth grade and then sixth grade you know graduating getting ready to move out there to get ready to go to west and and then grandma's living out yonder out down Mississippi and then it got too hard for her living in the of course she's 60 60 and she's living out there in the in the woods and no no tell she didn't have a telephone all she had was the electricity and she had to split her own wood and uh, do her own thing out of the well and all that and so she moved up in town uh, with her sister her sister uh, 
um, O-ring. She lived in a retirement home like thing. And so she moved out then there. And then whenever I got every uh, spring break, yeah, most every spring break, I would go over to her house from Blue Mountain. Go over there and stay with her. So I do remember one, two, three or four of them out there. She was in one place and then when she moves in the other. She didn't have a car. So most of the time that I was there that whole week, I was supposed to be doing, having homework, going to over down to the, um, the library. We had to walk everywhere. And this is... She walked a lot. Well, we used to walk a lot out out of Proctor too. I mean, we walked the dogs. Every, you know, a certain time, Dad had us to go walk the dogs, and we had no ends, ifs or buts. We had to walk the dogs at uh, that time, and we'd be gone for like 20, 40 minutes because we had to walk that whole mile up. And then that mile back, so that's two miles. And then sometimes he would make us walk all the way up to the hanging tree. That's what the tree was called. I didn't know what it was called. All I know it was a big old pecan tree. And we had to walk all the way up to the hanging tree. And then we had to turn around and walk all the way back. And from the halfway point to the hanging tree is another mile. So that walking the dogs those times, we had to walk four miles. Because double everything. I mean, we pretty much walked everywhere. We didn't hardly go anywhere. I mean, sometimes it was kind of boring. Sometimes the only thing we had to do was watch TV and that was it. And then some summer days, you know, Dad would kind of scratch up enough money or change and stuff, make us walk. From our house up to Lehigh. That's a 10 mile walk. And we walked it. And we had to pick up cans while we're doing it. And he's in the back. and Either in his truck. Or in the station wagon. And. Oh yeah. The station wagon. <laughs> the yellow station wagon. That was the coolest thing we had. Big old long station wagon nobody could so he pop up them little seats in the back and we still didn't really use seat belts <laughs> they had seat belts but we didn't really use them he didn't even use them either and that's weird no not it's so used to now you know clicking down the seat belt and everything because that was a habit that I got now to do but Back then, we didn't even hardly use it. I got my driver's test. Uh, took my driver's test on in the station wagon. You know what's cool about the station wagon? It just you just pop it in the one letter, and it will go. And Robert still thinks that. He, well, Dad saved up some money and put it in an account for him and. Since he was the only one that didn't use his account, I don't even know. I guess it was just something that, you know, they wanted to set up an account for everybody, but it didn't work out too well. Because, you know, four kids, you wouldn't be able to save money for four kids. Not the way we were living. On food stamps. Sometimes we were on food stamps. Sometimes we weren't on food stamps. We had to grow our own food. Sometimes the the owner of the land would let us just have a little strip, a little uh, place we can put. We had a watermelon and squash and stuff like that. And don't get me talking about that. Okra and corn and purple whole peas nothing but purple whole peas they made us one time go out there and we picked purple whole peas for like two whole hours and had at least what a hundred pounds and then we had to go back to the house and we had to shell them all hand shell them all that was not fun 
hand chilling and your fingers get all numb and purpley and and then we froze them in the throat in the thing and same with the corn the corn worms and all that I mean really interesting stuff out there um and so but it was it's really cool being a farm kid even though sometimes it was just didn't go anywhere didn't not unless you want to go somewhere you had to walk and the nearest neighbor let's see the Garrett's was the nearest neighbor uh, the homes they were the nearest neighbor but you know they were different they were the, some of the mean kids on the bus but you still had to walk through the mud and walked over there to them and everything and, and we weren't really sociable kind of folks still not not really not very sociable they only socialized most of the time with the folks at the church and and everything I talk about the church <laughs> I I wouldn't very sociable because that's how everybody was it was just non sociable grandma was probably the she was a little bit sociable when she had to go out here to the um to the doohickey thing the old folks thing she was sociable there and and we talk to people and when we go to the doctor you can make mama shut up mama just kept going and going and going and going and going and that's what she does too now she has nobody else to talk to nobody else wants to listen to her so she'll just talk your head off I'm, I'm picking up that habit too for sure I know I have pick up that habit to get me it takes them but I got also got my dad's habit I'm quiet I don't say nothing for for months or months or so, don't say nothing and then when something starts I start to warm up and then then I talk your head off I really do honestly I really do I've noticed that it's ever since I've been subbing I've, I've noticed that a lot and I've noticed it a lot all the time anyway it's just don't do it so much Whew. okay so got grandma and then driving test of that car he I was already well, it took a like about a two or three months I didn't know that dad had to buy uh, or pay or try to scratch up the money to pay for the license for my license I didn't realize that until you know here lately didn't realize that he had to do that or the insurance on the car to put me on there so you know it kind of got complicated that he had to have a liable person and most of the cars that we got were like beat up old things that you know only could get you one place to look and then of course we had that the little little car little stick car that's where Robert's he said that's where his money went is to go buy that car that little runabout that mama had for a while or the one I used for Pizza Hut delivery that little runabout when that thing ran out of gas <laughs> and kept ran it around for quite a while it supposed to have been a four cylinder and it was running on three <laughs> that was really funny and of course I had to drive all the way out 15 minutes away and then go all the way back up here to town and then run all around town delivering the pieces all over the place and of course that sucked up gas and the gas was starting to get higher priced and it's really something especially when I spit out a couple of times and then drowned it uh, I did drown it one time but what's neat about that car it had a little plug you can actually pull if it got flooded inside it had a little plug you can pull it out and it'll drain the water out that was the coolest thing 
but getting all stuck over here on Seventh Street, you know, go into that, go through that water, and then have that water on your feet, and then all you had to do is just unplug it to let it go down. That was interesting. That car was really something else too. I mean, did all can do all. Especially around that curve going to Southland, you go around that curve a certain way. If you go a certain, you had to slow down. If you go a certain speed, it'd go and you could slide off. Well, I did that. And then on top of that, it was not like our car, you know, how the reverse is down on it. Our reverse, that reverse was up in the, where the first gear was. So it was, the whole thing was reversed. It was, but it was only a, I think it was a, only a, a four speed. It was either four speed or five speed. But, you know, it was really a cool little runabout. A little green little runabout. And the story is that whenever they went and took it to the crusher, and and they, their mom, I think mom did was there, Robert was there, and dad was there. And as it was going into the crusher and it being crushed, they could hear it, or imagine that they could hear it scream, being crushed. You know, of course, that's where you know where we got our all our imagination. We got all that funny imaginations, and and they could swear that they could hear it scream. Well, there was no way of fixing it, but Dad loved to fix it, cause it didn't have a brain. It didn't have electronic brain, and he loved fixing that little thing. He couldn't fix the station. I get it. He wound it up with a brain, and and anything with a brain or electronics, he complicated, too complicated, too complicated, too complicated. That was all he would ever say. And I really got into computers, in I think it was in junior high. It was either junior high or high school. That we got in the computers, and of course, that's 80s, early 80s, early, real early 80s. And not many people knew how to code, and this internet went free, and all this, and tried to, try to, got really interested in the computers. Wanted to take a class to try to, you know, to, I would, if we, things would have changed. I would actually would have been a, a hacker, for real. I would I probably would have been in a hacker if we had the means to for me to go into there. I coulda, but it didn't work out that way. And we didn't wind up with uh, any money or anything. All right, it looks like my time is almost done. So this is episode one. I'm Loretta Nash. Uh, right now I have no uh, sponsors and most experience that I have is my personal experience don't necessarily mean that these experiences that I have will be the same as yours uh, thank you and I'll see you the next episode